There's an open Senate seat in New South Wales. Uh, is Fiona Scott going to put her hand up for it? I'm very seriously yes. contemplating that I will. So the process, uh, nominations have opened now. You're getting a cheer on from Stephen. <laughs> He'll manage your campaign. Yeah. Uh, is, is that uh, uh, nominations open now, it's uh, a week till they close, then the vote happens towards the, the end of May. So why would you want to do it? Why do you want to get back in? Look, my reasons for wanting to be involved in politics, particularly since the last election, both state and federally, was actually Kylie Tink inspires me to want to go into politics because she's such a moron. I'm sorry, Kylie, but, you know, <laughs> when she says things like, oh, we should put congestion taxes in, does she not appreciate that if you want to ring fence Sydney, Kylie Tink, like that, do you not understand that the people who are pulling coffees in your cafes, who are teachers in your schools, nurses in your hospitals. Do you know where they live? They don't live in North Sydney. They live in Western Sydney. And the fact that we haven't actually sat there and prosecuted the fact that Western Sydney is a really important part of Australia and we can't let the teal sit there and have a two-speed Sydney and a two-speed economy and we need to fight back. And if we look at what happened in the last state election, particularly the seats that we lost, they are west of Parramatta. Mm. West of Parramatta. They are the growth regions. A million people will move into the areas of Western Sydney, west of Parramatta over the next decade. And if the Liberal Party want to be serious, we need to work out how to communicate with the multicultural communities of Western Sydney and those growth regions. Going into the next federal election, there will be a redistribution where the smallest seat in New South Wales is that wonderful seat of Wentworth. So I'm sure, Allegra, <laughs> you like the fact that your seat is the smallest in New South Wales. All the teal seats are under quota. Western Sydney is over quota, well, massively. Important for the party to well and truly have a voice in Western Sydney. Good luck to you in the next uh, the next uh, part of the process, however that all works out. All right, winners and losers of the week. Uh, Stephen Conroy, who's a winner, who's a loser? Well, I don't know. You'll agree with me on this one, Paul. The Matildas... Brilliant victory oh, over the European champions, uh, England, uh, and the sky's the limit after that win. I know there'll be a lot of hard work still to be done, but uh, absolute winner of the week. Uh, and a big shout-out to that Chelsea player, Sam Kerr. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, the loser of the week. Loser yeah, of the week. I'm torn between whether it's Peter Dutton because the Stop one it. thing he's had going for him, the one thing he's done really well is keep the party together. And this week, you began to see the fracture. But I, I'm not sure if it's him or Simon Birmingham for his performance <laughs> where he tried to pretend that he is actually the leader of the Liberal Party in the Senate and just completely threw Peter Dutton under the bus. I, I'm not sure who was the bigger loser. Yeah, all I heard was Matildas and I agree. They're in the top four of, uh, of the World Cup consideration. <laughs> and for them to be able to win it at home, it's going to be amazing. All right, Fiona, you're winner or loser? Winner of the week is the British people because Meghan Markle's not turning up. Yes, correct. <laughs> and uh, the loser of the week is uh, the Americans because she's staying right there.